Picture this, guys. You're on the freeway, going full speed. It's the middle of summer. Your AC's on, blowing nice and cold. You're like, ah, your kids are happy, your wife's happy. You get close to your destination, you get off the freeway, you come to a stoplight, and what do you know? All of a sudden, your air conditioner starts to blow warm air. Hot, musty air. And you're like, what the heck? And you're messing with the controls and your wife's slapping you upside the head. Your kids are passed out in the back and you're starting to sweat. You don't know why, why is this happening? Why is my air conditioner not working anymore? It was just fine on the freeway, but now that I'm stopped, it's not working. This is why. As you were moving at, I don't know, 85 miles an hour, there was so much air moving past your radiator, your air conditioning coil, and that was keeping everything nice and cool. But now that you came to a stop for a prolonged period of time, when you're at that stoplight and you're just sitting there idling, your conventional radiator fan that's connected to the motor doesn't pull enough air in this heat to cool everything down. So I found a solution. I did a little research and I found a company called Flexolite. And I contacted them and they make this system that's called the Flexolite Monster Fan System. It's a dual electric fan setup that basically replaces completely your old mechanical fan that's attached to the motor. And in place, you get these cool dual 15 inch electric fans that pull, I think it's 5,500 CFM of air or something like that. So what that means is at that stoplight, you're gonna have tons of air coming past the radiator and the AC coil, while before you wouldn't have had that. In theory, all of this is gonna stay cold. Your air conditioning will stay cold because there's a lot of air that's gonna be moving past the radiator as you're sitting still. And that's exactly what I'm after. All right guys, so we're here back in the garage and I have the Flexolite 280 system that I'm going to be installing on the truck. And here it is. Uh, this system is awesome. It is a dual 15 inch fan electric system that uh, it comes with this whole entire um, assembly. The fans are already installed. Uh, the wiring's already kind of run there. And um, I mean, this thing is heavy duty. It feels really good. It's already got some holes for, for mounting options on the top and the sides. And it already has also padding there so that it's going to seal against the radiator and not have any air leakage. Flexolite also includes a bunch of different mounting options, and uh, this is high quality stuff. Very thick metal, aluminum I'm, I'm assuming. Very light, and, and everything's pre-drilled, and it looks great. On top of all the different mounting systems, they include the controller, a big old set of instructions, a bunch of wiring, and the fuse block holder. It's a drop-in system, so we're gonna do that right now. The first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and disconnect the negative side of this battery just to make sure that we're not gonna arc anything or mess anything up. The next step, I'm gonna be removing the upper fan shroud and it's just a couple of bolts, one, two, three up top, a couple more down below, shouldn't be a big deal. Here you can see the actual clutch driven fan, which seems pretty tight. I wonder if there's even an issue with that. Now that the upper radiator fan shroud is off, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the current fan, which is bolted to the motor, the water pump. And there's a couple bolts down here. Um, I think just four of them that I'm gonna to have to take off. There it is. It's weird, I didn't realize that the blades were organized like that. It almost seems like it'd be off balance, but I guess not. I got to get this bottom uh, fan shroud out of here and then I can start installing the new system. All right guys, we have the area clear. Everything of the old is out and we're ready to start assembling the new stuff. 
So this thing right here is called the VSC, the variable speed control. Obviously it is a part of the kit. We have to mount this to the actual fan shroud of the new electric fans. This variable speed control controls the speed of the fans going from 60% all the way up to 100%. It's also got locations where you can ma mount manual overrides for on or off. This is the top of the shroud. Put it on here, just like that. And you take a marker and you're gonna mark out two holes one here and one there. You're gonna use a 5 16 drill bit and just drill out those two holes. The next step is going to be to drill two holes, quarter inch holes right here. And we're, I'm gonna pass the purple and the yellow wire through those holes to the back. I just finished up the wiring on the actual fan shroud. The purple and the yellow wire meet up to the red and the black wires. Each motor has their own set of red and black wire. And what you do is you drill a hole through here and you route this motor's uh, red and black wire through this side. Twist the two reds together and the two blacks together. And then you're using a butt connector which is provided to crimp the two reds to the yellow and the two blacks to the purple. Then you put some uh, electrical tape on there, um, wire tie them away so nothing can get caught in the fan blades and you're good to go. Ooh. Houston, we have a problem. It looks like I'm running into a bit of a problem. If you can see the bottom of the uh, fan blade on this side is actually running into the lower radiator hose. And this is where I would suspect that this thing would be mounted. It's pretty much centered and it's as high as it could probably possibly go on my radiator units. I've been mounting the top brackets here. I'm using the two-piece brackets. It's because my radiator core is 17 inches tall instead of the 19. With the 19 inch radiator cores, you have a, another single bracket that they include. But in my case, I'm gonna be using the two piece brackets. The problem I thought I would be having um, with this radiator hose seems like it might actually not be a problem. I'm not sure yet. This radiator hose is just a little too close for comfort for me. But one thing I didn't take into account before was once you uh, install the fan system, you're gonna actually be compressing it against the radiator core probably about a half inch. So that should give me a half inch more clearance from the fan blades to this hose here. I'll have to install it and make the final judgment on whether I need to make some other modifications. But so far, this is the only issue I've, I've run into is, is my radiator hose. Okay guys, I have the fans completely installed, but I am running into a little bit of an issue again, and this time it has to do with clearance of the gasket going up to the radiator. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is the, the gasket material, uh, and it should be pressed up against the radiator, but there actually is a gap in there. I have all of these mounting screws fully adjusted this way, so it's pulled as much as it can be pulled. Um, and I also have the bottom uh, brackets uh, fully adjusted and installed. There you can see the bottom uh, gasket and it seems to be pressed, uh, compressed as much as it needs to be. I think they said about 50%. On the driver's side over here, it doesn't seem to be as bad. Um, it is up against the radiator, but it, it's just not enough for what I would like. At this point, what I think I'm going to do is take these uh, three bolts out and I'm going to drill new holes in the top here, just so I can try to suck this thing a little bit closer to the radiator towards the top. I did end up getting the third hole drilled. It was just, I, I tried to space it the same as these ones. Uh, it ended up being a little bit less than the space there, but I think everything's gonna be okay. Uh, it was extremely hard to pull this whole assembly back to get this bolt in, but I did get it done. It's sitting a little too much on here, but it's working. I mean, not, there's no issues with that. And this side, again, same thing. Uh, third hole, just had to crank it back 
and then start the bolt and put it in. Now you can see that the actual gasket material is compressed. I'm glad that I did this and the, the purpose was, was to get those sides uh, to be nice and pressed into the radiator fins. I didn't want the sides to be open and have any sort of gap. Hopefully you can get an idea of the clearance I'm having down here by the lower radiator hose. It is clearing, but uh, just barely. I'm gonna have to wire tie this radiator hose up a little bit farther away. It's just scaring me a little too much. This being a GM vehicle, they have these strange looking uh, end terminals on both the positive and the negative side. I've already replaced my positive side because it broke and I got a whole new cable. And it looks great and works great. On this side, uh, I haven't done it because this negative battery cable is in good shape, but I might do it here in the future. One thing to note is that this rubber right here, I've had to notch out with a razor blade. Um, in order to be able to fit this ring terminal on here and have a place for it to go when I connect this back to the battery. You can see I've taken the included uh, thick gauge wire and basically routed it all the way up to here, following the positive cable, wire tying it off. There is a junction here that's covered in electrical tape. It's basically a butt connector that goes directly to the VSC unit. Flexolite includes this a uh, spiffy little fuse holder. And this is basically gonna go from the battery. The other end of it is gonna just simply be connected to the red cable on this VSC unit. Okay, so the next step is going to be to attach a large yellow ring connector to one end of the fuse holder and a butt connector to the other end. All right, I got the, uh, the ring terminal and the butt connector on this thing installed. That's pretty much what it looks like. The ring terminal side is gonna go on the positive side of the battery. So all I have to do now is basically connect it to there. I've just finished with the two main wires, the wire coming off of the negative side of the battery and the wire coming off of the positive side of the battery, including uh, the fuse holder that sits in line. These are the butt connectors that attach to the two wires, the black and the red that go to the uh, variable speed control. Down here is gonna be my fuse holder. It's gonna sit right about there. Okay, I'm actually really impressed. Um, Flexolite's instructions, they fit on a legal size sheet of paper, but it's very thorough. I mean, it really tells you every single thing you need to know. And that's also partially because there's not very much you have to do. Other than mounting the fan, you have a couple of wires you have to run. Um, it does take a long time just because it's a kind of a custom install. You're kind of fitting the fan in there and. Uh, the bottom two brackets on the, the fan mount and everything, um, fan shroud, are, are custom fit, so you kind of have to do all that yourself. Um, but as far as the top goes, everything is there for you. All the holes are drilled. But again, it's a custom fit, so you, can't, you might have to make some tweaks like I did. The next step is finding a hot lead in my fuse box, uh, in which it says look for preferably in the fuse box for a hot lead. And they give you this tiny little piece of metal and this is supposed to tap into one of the fuses. Uh, it slides into the bottom with that little slot there. And then it provides on the top of the fuse this connection that you're gonna tap into uh, for ignition on. In order for me to find the hot lead in the fuse box, I'm gonna have to reattach my ground cable and this is gonna be a good time for me to test whether my fitment here is gonna be good. Try to get this in one shot. Okay. Seems good so far. Well, it looks like it's a tight fit, but it looks like it's gonna work. Okay, so we're over here in my fuse panel, and what I have to do is find a fuse, one of these small fuses, that is on only when the ignition is on. So I've come across these fuses, which you can see the light turning on. My ignition is not on currently, which means none of those will work. These two, however, will work. This one goes to the uh, ECM, and this one just says ENG, I think that's an I, so it sounds like this is the actual ignition fuse. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank the key, and you can see the uh, test light turned on, just as it should. Turn it off, 
Perfect. So we know that this fuse here, which I'm pretty sure is the engine ignition, is only on during ignition on, which is what the directions call for. Here's the little connector that they give you. And on the bottom, there's a little hole for that to go in. That piece wraps around the fuse and provides you with the terminal end. Reinstall it. They include this long, thin red wire, and uh, you need to put also the included connector in there. Strip the wire, you know, connect that, and this is going to go on that fuse tap that I just installed. This is the pink terminal attached to the thin red wire as per the instructions, which is also attached to the fuse tap. What I'm going to have to do is run this wire over into the VSC and plug it into terminal number 9. Also included in the kit is this piggyback connector. You're going to slide one end on your green or positive side of your AC compressor and the other end is going to accept a brand new green wire that is supplied in the kit and you're going to fold this piece over which sandwiches these two wires together and completes the connection. Down here is the temperature probe and they want you to install that as near to the upper radiator hose as possible. And that seems pretty dang good. They have a picture on the directions and it looks like I've installed it exactly where they installed it. The other end of that temperature probe has two wires. You're gonna to wanna to put the included pink connectors on the ends of these two black wires. And these are gonna to connect to terminals 10 and 11 on the VSC unit. It doesn't matter which way they go. It just, both of them have to go on terminals number 10 and 11. The job is done. I'm really excited to get this thing started. The last thing I have to do is install this 40 amp fuse, which is included, and it goes right into that fuse block that I installed a second ago. Oh, man, that's a, that is a tight fit for that thing. So go ahead, babe, just start the car up, and then uh, after a few seconds, I'm going to want you to turn the AC on. Let her rip. Let her rip. Yep. There they go. All right. As you hopefully saw, both of the fans kicked on. Everything sounds good. I'm going to go ahead and pull the car out and take it for a test drive. Guys, I couldn't be happier right now. Uh, my air conditioning, my air conditioning is freezing cold. Like it's freezing cold. This is a 1995 Suburban, and I literally feel like it's 2015. I can't, I can't believe it. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing. Uh, the fans are, they seem to be working perfectly fine. One thing is I'm, I'm very surprised that they're like extremely quiet. I thought they were gonna be these like loud whining fans like I've heard before on other cars, but they're actually not that loud at all. You can hear them kick on, but I definitely don't think it's any louder than this stock fan had it still been there, but uh, I, I think that um, I'm, I'm impressed. I really, really am impressed. If any of you guys out there are curious about this system that I installed, I will put links down in the description below this video, so check those out for me. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit that thumbs up, it helps me out. Thanks guys for watching, peace out.